All right, welcome to Statistics with Mr. Robeson. Today we're going to look at something called standardized scores or z-scores, and then we're going to look at density curves. So we're working our way towards normal distributions. So these are our two precursors to normal distributions. All right, so here's an example problem of what we're kind of working towards. How can we compare grades from two different classes? So we got a math grade and an English grade, and we want to say, well, how did, who did better? So the students in a math class took a test. The mean score for the test was 80% with a standard deviation of 12. Keith scored a 94% on the test. The students in an English class took a test. The mean score on the test was 85% with a standard deviation of 10. Keith scored a 95 on that test. Which class did Keith do relatively better on the test? So if we just look at the test grades on their own and not worry about the relative part, We'd say, okay, we got 94 in, let's see, this was the math class. And in the English class, you got a 95. So it seems like 95 is a little bit better than 94. All right, but that's really not how we want to compare these things. The way we want to compare them is see, to see how much better than they did Keith do in each class compared to the average or the mean for each class. So we can consider each class its own population. So the mean here for math would be the 80 percent. The standard deviation is 12, and his score, we'll call x, is 94. For his English class, his mean score was 85. His standard deviation here is 10, and his score was a 95. So when we measure how far something is above the mean or below the mean or away from the mean in any direction, we measure using the standard deviation as our measuring stick. So we want to say how many standard deviations away is it? So what we could do is 94 minus 80, see how far away is it, and then divide by the number of standard deviations. And over here we can do the same thing, 95 minus 85 divided by the number of standard deviations. This works out to 1 exactly. This works out to 1.167, 1 and 1 sixth. All right, so it looks like he did better relative to the rest of his class in math. All right, because he was farther above the mean in math than he was in English. All right, and by farther, I mean more standard deviations away. All right, so this brings up the idea of a standardized score or a z-score. So a z-score or a standardized score, it measures the number of standard deviations a data value is away from the mean. All right, this is going to be a very useful tool we have going forward. Anytime we want to compare two different distributions, we can look at their z-scores. All right, the formula for this, so we have two different, a couple different ways we can write it. We can say z equals the x value, the data value, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Or if we're working with sample data, we can say z equals the x value minus the mean here is x bar over the sample standard deviation s. All right, so what is it used for? Well, one major thing that it is used for is comparing different distributions. All right, so if one distribution has a certain mean and a certain standard deviation and another distribution has its own mean and its own standard deviation, we can compare certain values on each of those different distributions. So that's useful. It's also used for comparing like one value to another value within one different one distribution. So we don't have to have different distributions. All right, if our z-score is positive, that means the x value was greater than the mean. So we are above the mean. All right, because our standard deviation is always gonna be positive. So that means the top has to be positive. So x would have to be greater than the mean. If our z-score ends up being negative, that means our x value is less than the mean. So that means our, our data value is below the mean. All right, what happens do you think if z equals zero? All right, well, the 
the only way that could happen is if this top equals zero, so our data value would be equal to the mean. All right, so here's another example. Judy, who is 25 years old, has her bone density measured. Her results indicate a bone density of 948 grams per centimeter squared. So that's our X, that's her result. A standardized score of Z equals negative 1.45. Is, is what's calculated. The mean bone density for 25 year old women is 956 grams per centimeter squared. So that's our mean, and that's for all women of that age. So that is 956. So our population would only be 25 year old women. Explain what this z score means. So her z score is negative, and it's 1.45. So that means, see, we're working with Judy. So Judy's bone density. is so this was the number of standard deviations her density is below the mean so it is 1.45 standard deviations below the mean bone density there we go so that's what her z-score means it means that her bone density is that many standard deviations below the mean. Find the standard deviation of the bone density in 25-year-old women. Well, we've got our Z formula. So we got Z equals X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Let's plug in and see what we've got. So we've got negative 1.45 equals X, which was 948, minus the mean, which is 956, divided by the standard deviation. So all we're missing is standard deviation. So if we multiply the standard deviation up and then divide this over, we'll get that the standard deviation equals, let's see, that's negative 8 divided by negative 1.45. We can throw that into our calculator, and I believe we will get 5.517 and some change. All right, this is an AP calculus. We don't need to be accurate to three decimal places. One decimal place is probably enough, so we could say 5.5 .5 if we wanted. If we want to keep that the whole thing, we can keep that whole thing too. Use the mean and standard deviation to find the z-score for a woman with a bone density of 966. All right, so that's another x. Our mean has not changed. It's still 956. Our standard deviation has not changed. So to find the z-score here, we would do 966 minus 956, which looks like 10 divided by 5.517. If we do work that out, we get 1.8125. 1 1.8 is probably plenty. So that's their z-score. Explain the meaning of the z-score obtained in part C. All right, well, that means her bone density is... 1.8125 standard deviations above, it's positive, so it is above the mean. All right, if you want to say bone density, you can, but that's plenty right there. All right, so here's an example. Calculate the z-score of, z -score of a score of 58 on a test that has a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 13. So here's our mean. Here's our x value. Here's our standard deviation. What's the z-score going to be? All right, you can stop it if you need more time. So we'll have the, the x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. All right, and that's going to get us, well, it's definitely negative. The only negative one we've got is a, so it's probably negative 1.31. And yep, there it is. All right, the other thing I wanted to talk about in this video was density curves. All right, so a lot of times we have curves that are histograms and they're, they're bars and they resemble some sort of shape, some sort of smooth shape. And if we have a large enough number of observations, it gets closer and closer to being a smooth shape. All right, and we usually divide the bars to get them as relative frequencies so that each bar is probability. So usually when we're doing this, we're, we're working with relative frequency, which is equal to probability. All 
All right. So what we do is we make these curves into smooth curves. We just approximate them by smooth curves. All right. And since they're relative frequencies, we call these density curves. All right. So we can adjust the scale to make the whole area under the curve to be one. All right. And that makes everything probabilities. So that means area here is a probability. All right, so we briefly looked at that when we were doing relative frequency histograms, that, that the relative frequency was a probability. It's the same way we do it here. We just divide. So we divide by the number in each bar, and that brings it down. And then we kind of smooth it out, and it becomes a density curve. It shows where is the most dense area of data values and the least dense area of data values down towards the ends there. All right, so some things about density curves is they are always on or above the horizontal axis. All right, so that means they're on or above this axis. They never go negative, so they're always above zero. All right, the area is always exactly one, so we can always make it so the area is one. We just figure out what the area is and just divide by that, and voila, the area is one. And we can almost always find the mean, the median, and the mode fairly easily, which we'll take a look at, I think, believe on the next slide. There we go. Oh, there it is. So the mode is straight down from the highest point. So you find the highest point, then we go straight down, and then the mode will be whatever this x value is down here. All right? The mode is not this highest point. It's where it hits the x-axis. Right? The median is where it breaks it into 50-50. Right? If it's skewed like this, it's going to be a little ways over to the right. If it's skewed right, if it's skewed left, it's going to be a little ways over to the left. And the mean would be the point where it will balance. All right, so like the outliers have more effect out here because, well, it's farther away from the mean than the, out, than the end over here. All right, so the mean is probably the farthest over. And remember, when we're skewed to the right, the mean is going to be bigger than the median. All right, so that always works with skewed right, even with density curves. And then with skewed left, it works the other way around. All right, so here's an example. Which letter is the mean out of A, B, and C, the median, and the mode. All right, the easiest one to find is probably the mode. All right, take a minute and see if you can figure it out. All right, so I can tell that the highest point is right there. If we come straight from, from that, that's C. So that means C is the mode. So not that one, not that one. Next up, it is skewed to the left, which means that the mean will be less than the median. So that means between A and B, A must be the mean and B must be the median. All right, so our answer choice here, the correct one is answer choice C. All right, so that was just a brief introduction to density curves. We're gonna talk about them a lot more moving forward and normal curves. Right, the most important thing here was can you calculate a z-score and can you interpret a z-score?